Internet Radio. You call that Radio TV. Hello. You call that Radio TV. This is... You call that Radio... This is You Call That Radio, absolute legend in the house tonight, Mr. Paul McCall. I think we go live right now. I've got my, my green screen behind me. As you can, This is not real. I know, sorry to ruin the magic, guys, but I'm not outside. I am staying home and staying safe. But I just thought, I feel like I could be doing me some outdoors, and I'm sure you could all as well. So, you know, take that. Just enjoy it. Deep breath. Just hope that green screen doesn't fall down again. We're live with an absolute legend, Paul. Can you hear me? Hello. How you doing, mate? Hi, I'm all right. Hi. Very flattered to be called a legend. I'm gonna need yeah, to ask yeah. you just. To, I'm gonna need to ask you just to sit to the right a wee bit so that I can see you at your tent. That's, right, that's, yeah, a, that's a cracking no. view, man. There's no. There's no magic know. here. This is, no. this is just where the magic happens. You no, know, actually, the, 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 the plot twist is that you're actually outdoors, but you've put a green screen on so that we're not all jealous of you. Ah, uh, see. There's a, there's a nice bit out, you know, somewhere nice. And um, I mean, you, you you said, we just took off there that you have, you've been somewhere nice. You 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 did a, you did a, you were on set recently, which is a bonus. I was filming last week. I was filming out at uh, Lovely Lus. It was a kind of freezing cold day, early doors, up at five in the morning, away out. There's no lot of filming. Well, actually, there's been quite a lot picking up in Scotland. Uh, but it was the first time I've been out since the pandemic struck. I don't know if people out there are aware there's a pandemic. I heard about this. I heard Aye. about this. There's a bug going do people yeah. Do people need to say global pandemic? Is that different for just a, a pandemic? <laughs> A it's like the whole, pandemic. Aye, an endemic pandemic. This is global. This is a pan, the actual world. So well, aye, I, it was good, man. It was nice to be out in Lus. There's some nice people. It was started out as a, a radio drama, I think, this kind of scandal style thing. So I was very grateful to be out doing a bit of acting, which is the first for a wee while. I've done a little bit of extra work in... I, I think it was Outlander. We we had to go to a beach in the air, air at six in the morning outside in the freezing cold, and because in Outlander apparently to make it realistic, you're not allowed to wear shoes. And then <laughs> apparently shoes. I've like a, 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 you leave the house, you go to the door. You're allowed to wear your shoes to work. It was a kind of shoe. It was a shoe. It was like a I don't know a bit of cloth taped to a stone. And it was, uh, I was uncomfortable. <laughs> and I, I've only, I've only done about, I've only done extra work a couple of times. And the other one was a pure sky, like you know, I just, it was walking distance from my house. It was indoors, and I wasn't needed for most of the shoot, so I could just listen to my iPod and mess about my phone. I was in a different room, and then you, you've just got to. That's the, I suppose that's the thing about extra work and acting work in general is, is that you will get those days where not much happens, and then you get the days where it's absolute, it's a pure shift. Aye. I think... It and it's was, a long day. Aye, they're usually 12-hour shifts, man. I mean, if, if you're in it all the way through, like, then something like, let me show your days work generally. If you were in, you were probably then like, the full day. So they're had incredibly long hours, man. I mean, for us, it's always a lot less than the crew. The crew are there. You turn up and everything's all been set up and the, the chuck wagons there and all the facilities are there. So props to the crew that really put a shift in. I think it was the mighty Alec Guinness said that you you, you get paid for the waiting about. You do the acting for free. You wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> he said he would, but I wouldn't. I'm skint. So um, there you go. But yeah, also the waiting about can be a bit hardly done the minds, you know. Aye, aye. Well, it's uh, and obviously waiting about is fine. Wait, like, obviously, because not. Well, I said the other extra work, but I was in a wee room, so that we're allowed to be on our phones and uh, listen. I had my iPod. Maybe I was the green room. Well, it was a room, a room of sorts. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, but 
in Outlander, obviously, because people didn't have phones in the olden days, you can't be, you know, the phones were left away, so we just got to stand there freezing. But, um, yeah, man, we've got who's tuned in? We've got Susie Briggs tuned in. We've got um, Colin Symes loving the beach. Nice one, Colin. Um, Colin Michael, Syme? I played Colin a character was... called Colin Syme for years. Is that a wind-up? Is that a wind-up? Somebody no, gaslighting me on here. No, that's his real name. That he's, he's um, he plays in Colin Mustard in the Dijon Five, a band you might know. Oh, does he? I yeah, do know it, them, but I don't know. The synth player. So Colin Sime's a, a character you played. Colin, Colin Sime, I played Colin Sime for fucking three years or something, maybe more, for the National Theatre of Scotland. Man, it was a it was a dick. Was, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying Colin Sime for Dijon Five is that. James that's not what I'm him. saying here. The I'm not being an arsehole. About, I'm, I'm just saying the character I played was a bit of a fanny. Well, do you about Colin Sims? He doesn't actually know this, but I've been a good friend of Colin's for about 10 years or something. And right, the first okay. time I heard his name, I put it in my phone as Colin Sign because I thought I knew a guy called Sign, but now looking back on it, that guy was called Sign as well. I don't think Sign is a real <laughs> name. And it's still to this day, it's Colin Sign, Y-N-E in my phone book anyway. So just to let you know, Colin. Just be, you've got a wee name impediment. Yeah, just for that one name, just for that one name. Oh, like don't don't, introduce, to don't introduce him to Davy Syme. That's <laughs> for another fucking nightmare waiting. We got uh, that. John Ross is in the house. John Should Ross, you? JR. I know JR. How you doing? If it's the JR, I think I know. Is well, it you, JR? Of, there's a couple of John Rosses. There's a couple of John Rosses out there as well. So we need to That's double a, check that. Common as um, fuck name. Colin Syme, John Ross. So there's only one Susie Briggs that I know of. So I think that's hello, that. Susie. There's only one Sharon Drysdale. Good evening, lads. Enjoying the chat and the laughs. Hello, Sharon. Um, old Lang Syme. Old Lang Syme. Old, okay, Old Lang Syme. Hey. <laughs> did you, would that was you, last you anything, night. Did you do anything for Burns last night? Um, I, I made a kind of chicken thigh Asian dish. I forgot all about it. I've been staying off. I've been staying off um, social media and that in the news. I tell you what I've done lately. I got myself a Mac, right? Because I've been farting about playing guitar a lot about the house, and I'm like annoying everybody. So I thought I'll try and recall some it. So I'm getting myself wee bits and pieces of gear. So I was kind of detached for the whole Burns thing, man. But I do enjoy a good. I use. I usually get a haggis and that, and I usually do the, the Burns dinner and get smashed on the whiskey and that. But no. I'm a, I'm a day late, and so is that <laughs> joke. Right. All lang sign. <laughs> Still well, funny, but cheers, man. I've got my uh, cup of tea. Slangeva. Uh, I drink. Wouldn't it, recommend. So, it. I had enough drinks on Saturday to do me through for the rest of the week. I think, and also we have we've got a Burns night on because we do an alternative Burns supper. We've done it for the last ten years. Nobody sure if it's the tenth year or the twelfth year, but it's definitely not the eleventh year. We can rule it the eleventh year. But the friction Burns supper. On Saturday night, so I just had a curry last night and no whiskey, but maybe Saturday night we can get the haggis. We were thinking about doing a haggis delivery service if the demand is there. It seems like the demand is not there, to be perfectly honest, because I keep on saying it <laughs> during the show. Unless Would you like a haggis delivered? Because we've got a woman that runs a kitchen who is bored oh. and she's happy to do it. She's got the insurance. We can deliver the haggis during the show. We also kind of toyed with the idea of having a door-to-door bagpiper piping the haggis in. But we realise that that might not be responsible in this country. Well, no, that, no, no, like a super spreader, five tubed fucking thing that you blow spittle. <laughs> okay, no, I think somehow there might be. Somebody might put a kai, but the health and safety people might have something to say about that. They might. You put wee masks, put wee masks over the end of all your pipes, like fucking, you know, really hangs at the end of a trumpet. We, we've. But I tell we've, you what. Before yep. I forget, right, now we're on the subject of Haggis. A couple of years ago, when I was playing this character, Colin Syme, we did a, a Burns supper in LA at the the, the, the Broad Theatre in LA. It's not a big theatre place, but it's in films and all that. And they made a Haggis. The Haggis is illegal, was illegal in a lot of places in America. You can't import it unless it's in a can. Right? And so, they, they, they cancelled our show. I can't remember what happened. Can't, oh, no, they made a special. Asked us, Scottish Theatre Company, would you do a burn supper for the donors? So we had to do it for them. But they made the haggis, and it was enough to put you off the thing. I mean, 
I know when you hear the ingredients now, you're like, that's not great, but this was fucking disgusting, man. The smell that came out of this thing. I think they got the, I think they got the um, recipe off the internet or something. I don't know what they put in it instead of the ingredients, but I've never well, smelled said, anything like it. And because there's all, also so many sort of Scottish people that like to bam people up about what's in a haggis, there's mm-hmm. probably some recipes out there that are just completely wrong. And you know, we'd, 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 uh, we'd Nigel Fidoji on the show last week, and you know, we we're having a wee laugh about how you catch a haggis and stuff like that. And I think he was in the joke as well, by the way. That was a wee bit like a name drop. Sorry, I, I just name dropped the name. Name drop. You called that radio. I just need to pick up that name Back there. Uh, we've been, <laughs> well, the first time I met you, man, the first time I met you was at yes. Stereo. And I remember... I think it was the ad came off stage, but we still had the merch stand because we just launched our album. And yeah. then you came up and blagged the CD off me. And you're like, you Terrible. know me. You know me. And I'm like, did I do that? Did I say that? And I, no, but I was like, I, I do know you. I was like, I do know you, but I was just kind of like, I was confused. With, I was like, how, you know, I just kind of caught me on unawares because I do know you. And I was like, I was wondering how I knew you. And then I remembered yeah. it all came, made sense because I, I loved High Times. <laughs> And I, I love Lemmy's show, of course, as well. And we were at Stereo, and you were, we were just saying before we started the show that you had a good night. It a great night, man. John Ross, if that's old John Ross, that popped up there. He was there that night. <clears throat> He'll testify that I was I was pretty <laughs> far gone that night. Um, so I apologise if I, 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 I can't imagine any other time where I've tried to blag shit for free. <laughs> So I, f- I can only apologise, man. No, and man, it's all right. Won't yeah. let me being on here tonight offers you're... like some kind of it's no, something that's... back. You're man. more than fair enough, man. man. I, I admire, I, I admire that. I, I right, like okay. hustle myself. I appreciate, um, I appreciate it. We've got Gainer saying high times is fucking brilliant. Yes, we've Gainer. Got, we've got uh, Too Heavy says, hey guys, you're a brilliant actor, Paul. For the legends of Too Heavy. He's much. a haggis, says Ginger Nettle. I forgot the haggis tea last night. I had pizza last night instead. We've got Alan uh, Rorison in the house. John Ross confirming it's me, pal. So uh, is that the same yes. John Ross? I know. Is, have we got a mutual John Ross pal? Is, is that he a truck? Tra- is he a truck driver? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yep. There you go, man. That's go. Just, who, it's who just the very same. Who knew? Right. What we're going to do is before we go into we're going to go into some stuff. But this is the the moment where everyone needs to get the bus to YouTube. So I'll just explain that. Because right now we are live on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Twitch, all that stuff. But we're now going to go exclusively to YouTube for the actual show. So this is your warning, everyone. Get the bus to YouTube. And here's a wee, a wee song. This is the new intro to You Call That Radio song. It'll tell you what else is coming up. And I'll put a link in the comments so that you can get the bus to YouTube and get us there for the rest of the show. <laughs> Yeah, not respecting every aspect of my leg, Mark. The love of the man I talk on the radio. It's a little bit of. You call that radio, radio. Call that radio, radio. You call that radio, radio. Call that radio, radio. Come and say, in a mini, my name will just go with the flow. In a mini, my name will just go with the flow. Till you miss a mark, now go bend down low Till you miss a mark, now go bend down low Boom! Lot of mercy, lot of mercy, lot of mercy You call that radio, radio You call that radio, radio Come and say don't you be an edam and I'll go through your head Say don't you be an edam and say I'm losing the edam and say radio Radio, call that a radio, radio, straight from out of Glasgow, Glasgow, straight from out of Glasgow, Glasgow, nice in up on the studio, studio. Come and say, in a minute, my name will just go with the flow. In a minute, my name will just go with the flow. So till you miss a mark, now go bend down low. Till you miss a mark, now go bend down low. No radio, radio, you call that the radio, radio. Call that radio, call that radio, TV. 
we are indeed building a thing. Get the bus to YouTube to watch the rest of the show. We're live with Paul McCall here, but I'm going to say goodbye. Goodbye, Periscope. That I think Periscope's about to be deleted anyway. I think they're going away. Bye, Twitch. And bye, Facebook. You can watch the rest of the show on YouTube. I've put the link in the comments. And that's us. And that's us. We're, we're now just live on the YouTube exclusively. So well done if you've got the bus to YouTube. Uh, Potter of Colin Syme. It was actually him that came up with that, Potter. So, yeah, nice <laughs> one. Uh, we've got Susie Briggs saying, loving that new intro. Uh, that was shows That was Bonnie Prince Bob and Capital 1212. I think they made that. This is um, what actually happened the first time I tried my green screen. Yeah, and that and that's been happening all day today. So you know that it's kind of like a metaphor for the uneasiness that we all feel that something bad's about to happen. So that's why I thought I'd put the nice campsite in the background instead. So we're all good. We're all good. We're all good. How's the whiskey? Is that a good whiskey? It's not really, man. It's it's cheap bourbon that I got out. Of. There's a, there is nice whiskey down there, but I've got a feeling that I might erse it tonight. So. It's cheap bourbon at a Lidl's, man. I was using it for cocktails. <clears throat> Whiskey sours have been into lately, so I'm just going to have a couple of those. But if I get the taste for it, and I'm drinking good whiskey, it's it's no on a, it no on a Tuesday thing? night, man. I'm no not, Tuesday, yeah, man, I've got, to, I can't, I've got to stay away from whiskey, man. I think, you know, I, I seen my dad, my dad loved his whiskey. He was, mm -hmm. a, connoisseur, he was a connoisseur of the mm -hmm. High Commissioner. Do you know what I mean? So I've got to stay away from that. I think it's, an, it's genetically a bad idea for me to get anywhere. Got the gene. I've got, got the, the gene, gene. I think I've got the whiskey gene. Um, uh, but yeah, go back to the music. So obviously you, you were, were at the gig that we were talking about there, but I've also mm -hmm. seen you've been quite involved in other stuff. Like I noticed that you were on Declan, Declan Welsh's video and stuff like that. Hi, man. That was, that was pretty sweet, man. I didn't really know much about them, but um, got sent to be script. <clears throat> I could tell he could write, man. I could tell he was like a clever kid, you know. So he's like, oh, I'll do a bit of improvising in it if you want. I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. Let's do it. Quite like the tune. Got into them. Went to see them live at the the church up in the, the East End. She looks. She looks. I went to see them live up there and thought they, they tore it up, man. Thought they were pretty good. I introduced them, not that. Felt like a celebrity. As the You're character. a celebrity. You're a celebrity, no. but no, but I felt like one that night. <laughs> so how, Andrew, how, you you uh, are so people do you get that a lot where people actually they recognise you but then they're not sure why and stuff like that. Right. So I've got a wee side hustle, which I'm grateful for, man. Um but she's like delivering food and that. So it's kept me in a few quid every week. It's only a couple of nights a week, but it gives me a bit of cash in my tail. I've had theatre jobs cancelled and all that this year, so I'm like, at least that's reliable. So the ranges of things I get when I'm delivering are things like, wait, wait you doing here? You're meant to be a celebrity. <laughs> that was just last weekend. You're meant to be a celebrity. And then they You're meant to be. Aye, and then like, somehow they're embarrassed to tip you. I'm like, no, man, tip. It's fucking minus eight out here. <laughs> It's minus eight. I need a tip. COVID so, must be aye. affecting the tips. COVID must be affecting the tips. Aye, so aye, it's all, my... all the cheap, all the cheap folk like saying, "Oh, I just leave it at the door." I don't aye, aye. Aye. Leave it on the porch. <laughs> you leave it on the porch like you can afford the fucking porch, man. Can afford to leave me a pound? What can you do, man? You know, spam valleys. People have got big hussies to heat. That's how. That's what I tell myself. But I, no, sometimes, I mean, half the back of me show, it got pretty mental and for a while, which was nice, you know what I mean? I really liked it. We, we taste that. Oh, this must be what it's like to be sort of successful on a soap. <laughs> you got, well, the, the Lemmy show, I know you're doing a, a, is it the Lemmy show meme page? Are you doing a quiz for them or something? Ah, young boy Giles who uh, does quizzes for Peep Show and that. I think he's a big Peep Show fanatic. So I did one. 
I come across that proper alcoholic. I did one last year at the start of lockdown, and it uh, was saying, how oh, much you want paid and all that. And at the time, people were going mental for, like, PPE and all that. So I was like, oh, don't worry about it, man. Just donate it. But let me see. It's gone to uh, donate for any charities that are getting PPE together or date direct to buy this stuff. And just send me a bottle of tequila. So we were doing a Remy show quiz that night. Stupid arse got steaming on the tequila. It was really, really lovely. Um, so that went well. But he's asked me to do another one. So, but he showed me how much he donated. I was like, this time I'll, I, I'll take fucking some of that. <laughs> God, it was a lot of interest, man. I thought, I, thought, I thought lockdown was only going to last for a couple of weeks. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Fuck. I know, man. man. It's meant away. It's like, meant what about the theatre stuff, man? Like, so the, we're going to let me show in a wee bit about the, the theatre stuff. So is that is that b- what you've been doing mostly over the years? No, oh, man. No, it's been... I've done very little theatre, man. But, like, what I have done, I've been really cracking jobs. So I did the thing called... Um, Strange Undoing of Prudencia Heart. That's the thing I played Colin Simon. Other wee bits and pieces, but that was probably the biggest bit of touring theatre. I'd never toured a... Th- Theatre show in my life, got this job, had a, a, had nine days to learn it, two and a half hours, fucking show, all told in rhyme and couplets, five years on stage, fucking hundreds of folk songs to learn, and, and like musical numbers, and fucking, okay, oh, it was a heat fuck, man. I thought I was having a heart attack at the airport. So I flew out to America and did a tour of sort of around America. Then we went to um, Vancouver, then we went to Australia, then New Zealand. So it wasn't a bad gig, man. But That's no, amazing. I did a wee theatre job last year, the year before, just at Christmas. Um, Douglas Maxwell, who's a tremendous writer, South Side Boy as well. Um, uh, he'd written a thing called I Can Go Anywhere about a young asylum seeker. Or, uh, aye, asylum seeker who finds this academic who's written a book about mod culture and just about how governments absorb youth culture to seem cool and sort of subvert it for its original meaning. And this um, young refugee, a young asylum seeker, he's read the book, he's mad into mod culture, and he thinks if he gets a letter for me, it's going to be, everything's going to be hunky-dory, and he can stay in the country. And so it was kind of about gatekeepers and all that, and who's got to say about who gets to stay and who gets to go. And um, that was a wee two-hander. That was supposed to be gone at a festival last year. And obviously, well, what happened? So that was that was a good wee eight, nine, ten weeks work uh, doing something really fantastic. And another, a chance to have another go at it, because it was on at Christmas when, like, pantos and everything were on. So the audience, there was slim pickings, man, and it was a really lovely show. So um, hopefully that will come back again. But there might is, be stuff in, Edinburgh, a, in is, the pipe. Is, is Edinburgh Fringe just, are they just giving up this year or, they, or has everything just been rescheduled for August at the moment? I, I don't think it will happen, mate. I really don't. Even with people getting vaccinated and all that, I just don't think, like, theatre, by, oh, like indoor music things, I, I just don't see it, man. I just yeah. don't, you know, they'll have supermarkets and all that, eat out, help out, and all that stuff was just insanity to me. And theatres and some bars you were in, they were like the cleanest places you could go, you know. So yeah. uh, to me, they should have looked in for six months. And, um, everybody should have got paid. You just paid everybody, put, press the pause button. But, you know, the, the, just the dread that capitalism is going to grind to a halt or people will stop consuming, I think, drove it on. Here we are. 12 months later, and they're just quarantining people in hotels, you know what I mean? A year just, fucking later. I know. That's Fuck me. Going, but, and they've not, even, they've not even agreed that it's definitely going to happen. They're just kind of floating no. the idea of Aye. the hotel idea. So that's still probably going to be a couple of months away that people have to... Fucking up this and the vaccine out, man. I was saying to my wife, he's uh, got a vaccine. It's all wonderful, right? Uh, even though it's very quick. We all know it's very quick. Um, I says to her, they're going to fuck us up and all, aren't they? How get a bit? They're gonna fuck in this out. Oh no, we're only getting one dose out. Three months instead of three weeks. What could go fucking wrong? <laughs> the psychotic man. That's kind of but but this is why I don't go on social media. I wake her up screaming at Twitter in the morning. Yeah, because there's something it's else. There's another it's, shit sandwich. To eat. I said the the social media is a nightmare right now. There's a, the hide button and the unfollow button as as your friend. Yes, just, mute. Mute, 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 mute. I, I get into about one argument a month, and then I just, uh-huh. 
I instantly regret it and go, why did I, why did I do that? Why did I get involved? But sometimes you just see someone saying something that you will, oh no, I can actually prove that that's not the case with mm-hmm. a link and that maybe that will help the conversation. And then you go, why did I do that? That's not going to help anyone. Not going to help anyone. Just, just hide and unfollow or speak to someone in a private message or a phone call, maybe. But I think maybe that's what the problem is, is that see if you were, see, because you've not got that interaction of for, for Scotland that's probably meeting your pals in the pub or whatever. In the pub, mate, yeah, on, on yeah. The football. But if you were to yeah. come out with some of the shit to your mates at the pub, they'd be like, shut the fuck up. That's uh, you be getting, you'd be getting laughter out of the place. You'd be getting so slapped. You'd be like, oh, maybe, maybe, that, maybe that's not right then. Maybe that's not right. But there's obviously none of that. <laughs> Everyone's in their own. Because obviously, when I'm unfollowing people, but there's people that, People are unfollowing me as well. So it's just like everyone's in a nice little bubble where everyone agrees with everyone, which isn't helpful either. But it is helpful in the short term, so you don't have to listen to it. It's sort of confirmation bias, isn't it? And I, you know, I'm pretty firm in my pretty firm in my beliefs about what's right and wrong. So there's not much nuance. I, I do a lot of ranting on Twitter. But I'm I'm pretty firm in my beliefs. I'm I'm not there to kind of debate with anybody. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think I did it once. I said something like, can anybody, like a serious question, can anybody name me one good thing the Tories have done in 10 years? You go, like, aye, aye, but you know, they did that. They did, they did that. Mind you, couldn't they get that thing? And then, and then they did that. And now it's better. And I think <laughs> the, only, the only reply I got was some guy going, aye, what about the SNP? I was like, that's not, that's not, that's, that's not an answer, is it? That's not like, an answer, no. You can ask me that question after you answer my question. I but I but them. So I'm just like, oh, do you know what? It's pointless. It's fucking pointless. I'll just keep ranting about how you should never trust a Tory. Apologies it's... if you've got many. I can't imagine you've got many Tory followers on here. I think, so I, don't... The, I think all the Tories have been scared off by now. And I think we're all right. Better than to... I think you're all right here, man. It's, a, it's a very much fuck the Tories. Uh, co- uh, it's quite Terrible. common. It's quite common that, uh, that nobody's yeah. in the Tories here. I've got some comments coming in. Uh, Mickey Mouse says, well said on the lockdown tactics. Is that the Mickey yeah. Mouse? We've got the Mickey Mouse. We've got the Colin Syme. And we've got the John Ross. We've got yeah, um, we've got Zara Gladman as well. There's only one Zara Gladman. Uh, Hello, Zara. Your heart was amazing. There was free whiskey. Is it was. True? It is true. I never drank whiskey. My dad was a big whiskey drinker, but I never drank whiskey. I toured with that show because they were, they were getting out free whiskey before it. So inevitably there was free whiskey after it. And I was like, ah, oh, it's free. To, try to tell myself I've not got a drink problem. Ah, oh, it's free. I better drink it. And eventually, after three years of touring that show, I was like, oh, I like this. I've got a taste for it now. We've got, um... So I'm glad you liked it, Zara. Love your stuff. Hope you're well, pal. Sarah's right. absolutely smashing it. Check out her Instagram. It's one of the highlights of lockdown. Uh, very funny. Zara Gladman, I think just check out, look for Zara Gladman on Instagram, you'll find her. Uh, I met her on kids? a train. I met her on a train one night. I was coming back for Edinburgh. I think I might have been doing a show. Correct me if I'm wrong, Zara. You were with your boyfriend then. I don't know if he is now. But um, I... I think I met Zara on a subway train as well. I think Zara... Yeah. Yeah, is that which is this your thing, Sarah? <laughs> that's it, your thing. That's a that's a lemme sketch, isn't it? So what's your thing? That is, that's one of the one of the ones that gets I wish I'd hang, mate. <laughs> what's, what's on Twitter, mate. Wish I wish I'd hang. I've geese your laptop. I was gonna <laughs> Oh you're you're the laptop guy. Uh, the for, laptop for guy. Yeah. So, uh, so when you're when you go do, to do your saying like, when you do the Lemmy show, it's like an all day thing. So do you, well, so just, some days just, when you're in filming, they could, they could be long days. Are you, do you do all your ones in a one or whatever, or is it just like, you're just waiting for that one skip? No, it'll be like different setups. It might be a day where you're doing like two or three sketches and then, um, and then you're sitting about, because it's the setup's the same. They're using like green screen or something, do you know what I mean? So it doesn't make sense to use me, like, oh, well, use this other actor because we're in the same place and we're going to use it. So it depends, man. It just depends what the scheduling's like. I don't mind that. I like being on set. I, I have a, I, it's a good laugh, man. What with Brian was a fucking hook because I was a fan before I was in the show, you know what I mean? 
Aye, it's hilarious, man. There's, class, and there's, no, there's nobody even like him at all in the world. No. It's a one-off. And, you know, it's, it's, it's like we, we, we stream a little bit to Twitch as well. It's not really taking off the podcast because they, they want people to, you know, it's, it's more about people playing computer games, which mm. I don't really understand because I've been clean after the football. I had a football manager addiction 12 years ago. <laughs> I haven't touched a computer game since, mate. 12 year clean this, this month. So, uh, yeah, I've got to stay away from them. But Do you get a game computer game. chip? <laughs> like your 12 step program, we get you a big SIM card or a, a You CPU. think I get something, but the way it's working out is, is there's no money in podcasting, so I'm actually going to have to play a com- I stopped playing computer games because it was ruining my life and I wasn't being very productive. And, I, and by stopping computer games, I started my band and started doing things, and it gave me much more time in the day. But now, in order to make money in this, strange world i may actually have to play computer games in order to make money on twitch so that'll be that'll people be, that'll are be. making fortunes at it man people are making i mean they're yeah. sponsored and subscriptions and and, it's, it's and, they're just, and they're not very and they're not even very good at just to me it looks like they're just playing the computer games lemmy's the exception to that rule of course because just lemmy just doing anything i mean he's just I mean, what's that game he's playing euro trucker or whatever he's just like driving around <laughs> Like, and he's just smashing it funny as fuck all the time, non stop. And he's uh, very, he's very, very good. Uh, we've got Zara says, I took a creepy photo of Paul on the train. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> man. <laughs> I, didn't want, I didn't want to say anything because I quite liked you, but if I remember rightly, you were taking a photograph past your boyfriend. <laughs> I think I might have clocked it. I don't know. And then you were like, Oh, that seems creepy. And I was like, No. <laughs> you transport. know it and we know Just it. Just that transport is really... a thing. Transport's a thing. But, um, Zara that? was on one night when we were playing in the Glad Cafe as well. She was doing some of her stuff. I think I was on my big Bruce Martin's band. <clears throat> we were playing with him at the time. Uh, she's amazing. So you get away with it because you're a talent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I don't think there are any Tory supporters. Or I don't think there are any Ori. I don't think there's Ori. I think you're no. all right. I think there's Tory hates fine here. We've got a, a question for uh, Alice Sutherland who says, Paul, you look a wee bit different in your photo, man. Uh, I seen that you tweeted ah. earlier. I seen that you tweeted earlier last week when I put the post up that you were coming on the show and you retweeted it. People were saying Same you look so young. <laughs> you know, what's the secret? What's the secret, Paul? Uh, old forties. <laughs> That's the secret of looking young. Um, I don't know, man. It's just a, it's just a beard, man. I'm a bit greyer. It's a black and white forty. Um, I, I could lose half a stone in three weeks if I put my mind to it. So, no, don't worry about it. It's a, it's kind of lockdown look. Yeah, just well, what's, what's the point? What is the point exactly, man? Exactly. It's uh, the oh, when, when I'm picking people's photos because I don't, you know, people are nice enough to come on the show. I don't want to really say to them, oh, and send me a photo and a bio. I just think, Rick, I'll just get one off the internet. So I just go for the for a photo. And sometimes, you know, I think I use we had Mary Keane on the show last. Week and I, I used a photo of hers probably for 1996 or whatever. <laughs> but fuck it, fuck it. She's still looking great anyway, but I just um, it, you might as well just use a good uh, the first one that pops up that's obviously a professionally done photo. I'm glad you used that one because that, um, that session for the photographs was the most I've ever paid for a session with photographs. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad there's a bit of mileage. Coming out, my wife takes pictures. She's a photographer and a, an artist, and a painter, and that does a bit of teaching. So her photos are just just as good. It's just I'm older and harder to pick, take photographs of. We we'll got the when let's talk. Let's go back to the start. Then, what made you get into acting and stuff? Um, I, I grew up in Castle Milk and. Um, they they used to used to take my primary school up to the secondary school. They did a show every year, and there was a guy in it. And they were, they think the first one we went to see was Big Al, and the guy that was playing Al Capone was excellent. I thought it was excellent. And that a pal years later, it was a few years above me at school, <clears throat> and I was like, ah, oh, that's fucking cool, man. He's getting to be a gangster doing American accents. I was always doing like American accents, not about the house. Because it's all you watch, Starsky and Hutch and all that when I was growing up. So um, I just kind of a wee bit sort of fascinated and obsessed with that. Um, and then kind of when I went up to the big school, sort of did their plays and stuff. 
all of our wee bits and pieces and things. I went, I was a bit, I went a bit with a kind of not a hard crowd, but just a crowd I didn't feel comfortable about talking about. I want to do this acting and all that. And so I kind of did it in my spare time. But the guy who played Big Al, he ran a theatre company and a scheme at the time. And um, and that was that, really. I suppose I always kind of wanted to do it. Then I got a job, got married, had kids. My brother kept acting. He kind of got into it, followed me. I used to follow me about everywhere. Right pain in the arse, man. Always eating. Always eating, man. So he would follow me about. He'll tell you this. And I would gaff man up. Ah, hey, fuck this. These are my pals. Fuck off. <laughs> so he fucking showed me. He kept doing it. Went to Glass, um, sort of SYT, Scottish Youth Theatre and all that. Meanwhile, I was kind of working away in the railway, but I was writing songs and still being kind of creative. So I got paid off for that. Took my redundancy and then thought, I'll get into it. I'll see if I can get into it again. See if I've still got the, the balls. Um, so well, I got back in. It, it, it takes a lot, man. It's like, like I've done a couple of wee bit, like I did a, a couple of wee play things before. And it's like a totally, I suppose we we a band. You've got the band. You can blame it in the drummer. You can when it's <laughs> when it's an actual play, when it well, I mean, he does do enough to get the blame. So even when it's not his fault, it's fair's fair. You know what I mean? But when you get when you're actually doing a play, when it's just like you know that bit when it comes to you, and it's mm. obviously your bit. Everyone's looking at you, and you're just like, mm. oh, no. I've, I've there's, a, a, see. there's a dichotomy, a dichotomy, and a sort of I. It was weird for me because I'm I'm quite a shy person, um, really at heart, and I kind of have been so. Um, or something about I can like hear it all the time. Uh, being a different character, or sort of loving playing something else, and and sort of demanding attention, is um. Is definitely in there somewhere, um, and I, I just love. It. I was I found a thing the other day. The first short film I made, I kind of wrote, co-wrote with a guy who wrote High Times, John Rooney. Um, it was a film called Electric Blues, and I found the sort of postcard for it. We got these wee postcards made up, and I was like, oh well, I thought I'd been doing it longer actually, but it was say two thousand and four. So I was like, that's not bad, man. It's not bad, you know. No, I'm not fucking Hollywood, man. I'm not Jerry Butler. But I get to do something that I love, man. I'm comfortable on sets. I'm comfortable in a theatre. I'm comfortable on stage. Not so much in the rehearsal room and stuff, because you always feel like you're, you're working it out. Are you getting it? Are you, are you, is it all on the surface? Are you, you know, it's, it's is that just, also, is that, is that maybe similar to, like, we were talking in the show the other night about when you're doing a sound check as a band, and there's obviously maybe a couple of people, you know, maybe the other band, maybe a couple of partners of the band are stoking about, maybe a promoter here and there. So you've got, you feel like there's a there's a little bit of a crowd, so you want to not be shite, but also it feels weird to give it your all when there's no mm -hmm. actual crowd there. So is that kind of similar, what's going on in a, a rehearsal? You don't want to overdo it or something? I'm I'm like that in a rehearsal, man. You know, it's lovely finding moments and stuff. But I think, you know, they call it it's a it's a communion with the audience, you know, and it sounds a bit kind of wanky or whatever. But um, I, I definitely feel like you feed off it, man. You know, and that that show I was doing the Prue thing, it was touring. It's set in a bar, it's loads of live music and everything. So you know, if they're feeling it, man, but what a night you're gonna have, you know. Um, if there's an audience and it isn't feeling it so much, it'll still be good, but, you know, it's their loss, kind of. But audiences can get self-conscious as well. You know, I noticed that being right up and in and about an audience, um, like sometimes they're a wee bit shy, you know, and, and somehow it's your job to sort of say, it's all right to let your hair down. Or, so I, I think it can be like a, aye, any kind of performing, you know. It's, it's, there's insecurity there. That it's as good as it can be, you know, or as honest or as raw or as powerful if you're in a band, as energetic, you know. That I think that's what people are there for. Like yeah, you're using that vampires. Yeah, you're using that nervous energy into something else. I know what you're talking about, man. That's hey, the gig, got... that's the mastery of it, I think, the, what acting is, what performing is. That's what I think, anyway, you know. 
Alice is wanting to clarify you about your photo. She says that you look better now. Honky even, says Alice. Who said that? Alice Sutherland. Alice knows now. what she's talking about, man. And John talk on at the photos. He's got a couple of pics of me and Paul might not want to use them right enough. <laughs> don't, uh, don't, don't be publishing <laughs> anything, Ross. Please. I've no yeah, I've, idea. I can, I can imagine. I can Nothing imagine. good. I've been out, I've been out with him before. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, Susie, where can we says where can we hear your songs? Um have you got anything on YouTube? I, I've got stuff where kind of my writing partner, I've got a wee thing, a double act called Dignitas. So me and this other actor, Gordon Monroe, a very fine actor for back in the day, Rain Dog and all that, where he, um, uh, Scottish acting school up there went with loads of illustrious names. He should have been one that is a sort of household name by now. Um, but me and him write songs and kind of funny dark stuff. Uh, some of that's on YouTube. Um, stuff on High Times, because I wrote about seven or eight songs for High Times. Um, um, I don't know. You could get that on YouTube. But the problem is, I never took it really seriously. Although it's something I've done for a long time, I never got down to anywhere. I better record that and or, or write them. and It's just a bit rubbish with all that stuff. You know, people have liked them down the years, and if Somebody that said actually took me aside and went, you know, you could write songs and stuff. Um, I, I might have believed it. There was one guy, John Morrison, who was in High Times, kept saying, you know, you're writing songs for this thing and um, you should get paid properly and get the proper... People should be looking after you a bit better with the, the songs and the songs you're writing. I, just, I was just happy to have stuff in the show. I had only been acting for a couple of years. I had no idea how anything worked. So... Those stuff kind of disappeared. Has High songs Times are... got a soundtrack out or anything like that? No, no, it's just High Times was such a weird, such a weird gig, you know. It just felt like um, I'd written a song. They asked me if I had any songs because this character Jimmy needed songs for the show. And I had one song that I had written, and they were like, Hey, that's good. And so they used it in the song, in the, f in the show. I had no idea people should be paying you for things like that. You know what I mean? People should go, actually, there's a budget for music and you've written that music, so yeah. you should get paid for that. Nobody told me and, that and at if the that, time. If you did know that, then, then they would have probably had to have made a CD in order yeah. to pay it back or something like that. But I don't know. It's just weird stuff. Like, John doesn't own the characters and all that. I don't know. Maybe now there's a time thing after 10 years of revert back to him. and I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think it's still your tunes. It's still your tunes. I, I think, the, think... The, I think the, the, the copyright rule, I think you were referring to there, I'm not sure if you were or no, but I think it used to be like after 30 or 40 years, then it goes into public domain. But mm. the, then Elvis became 40 years old or the Beatles became 40 years old and then the record covers are like, hold on a minute. <laughs> you're, not, you're not getting this for free. People are living. They're living <laughs> like damn modern medicine. <laughs> so I, I think no, it's probably about two hundred year or something. I don't think you. I think you'll need to be get to the year three thousand to get a, a Beatles tune on your yeah. on your podcast without the robots cat giving you any trouble. Yeah, uh, we got. Uh, thanks for that answer. I'll have a wee look for High Times and other links. Which High Times is on YouTube. I was watching a bit of it back uh, the day, and it's. Uh, I wish I'd actually watched it all before the show, man. But I've been right deep into the Sopranos. It's. it's I don't know why you have time to watch telly, but had a couple of weeks off, so I just went, rather than try and watch a new series that might be shy, I hadn't watched Sopranos for, since it finished, you know what I mean? I watched it as it came out. So it's been great what, binge watching all that back, and, you know, I'm up to s one more season to go now. And it's an absolute classic, man. So it's like, I think it's, for me, it's Sopranos, The Wire, Breaking Bad, and maybe Boardwalk Empire would be my, my top ones. I should have five. I don't have another one. I can't think of another one. What was your what's your ones? What's your hang? Right. The box set um, hangs. As far as box set hangs are concerned, um uh, I think Breaking Bad was probably the first thing I got committed of it. Like people had watched four seasons of it or something. And I was like, right, I better check it out. And I got into that. Um Deadwood. That absolutely blew my mind when I saw that Shakespearean language. 
in this town in Dakota and in the kind of west as it's just starting to build and all that. Um, Ian McShane, Timothy Olive, and the performances are outstanding. It's a wee bit hard to understand. You need to tune your ear in a wee bit, a wee bit like watching any Shakespeare or that. For me, anyway, takes me a wee minute to well, tune in. Um, but that was astonishing. Uh, Sopranos was incredible. I loved that. Can I, I didn't watch that to years later after it was on. I think I used to work on a Thursday night. I think it was at drama school at the time, or college drama school. <laughs> um, uh, so I missed it all. And then a couple of years ago, it was then Panto down in Greenock, and a mate of mine gave me a copy of his box set, and me and the missus destroyed it in two days, man. And it was not, I'd never seen anything like it. Gandolfini had a lot of them, I just, it blew me away. Um, what else? What else have I watched lately? I like The Wire. I like The Wire as well, eh? Yeah. Um, I'm a big sci-fi head, man. I like, I like that kind of escapism. So um, I like Battlestar Galactica, kind of reimagining it. Uh, um, thought that was pretty decent. Can't think of anything else. Alana has commented to say that she absolutely loved High Times. And yeah, man, it was like, I just want to say that. I mean, when it came out, 2004, 2005, was it? It must have been 2004, man. 2004, yep. 2005, right? It was, it was a revelation, man. There was literally, I don't think there's been anything on like it since. Or, but at the time, it was just like for a, you know, for a young, I, I was young then. And it was just, well, I felt young. Younger than I am now, anyway. And it was just, was just great to see something so, so well acted and it just people using chat that you would actually hear because i mean that's a problem that scottish television goes through is it seems to go through lots of processes where by the time you know it doesn't really sound scottish or the chat's a bit off maybe because they're worried that maybe people in england won't pick up the colloquialisms and stuff like that but it just sounds scottish great part are really entertaining and then it did well in south america which is surprising but it just goes to show you I I think it was the themes were kind of universal, you know. I think it's the problem with Scottish stuff. I, I don't know, man. It's a wee bit self-conscious, you know. I think people get the cringe at their own accent or people try to clip it to make it, like, understandable. For You know, but a lot of people that in theatre and stuff that do telly or come on it and kind of speak, not the same way, but... I don't know. I think High Times had a sort of quite an authentic. Um, it was on late at night, wasn't their intention, but they put it on at like having a cult on a Thursday night or something. So pure students fell fucking pouring in for the pub. So very, very few people did see it because it was like smoking weed and stuff and um, if there are themes in there that I suppose they thought were a bit too risky. But it did really well, man. It, 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 um, the first series did all right um, in the Rose Door, so it's quite a big kind of television award, like the biggest television award in the world it might be. But I think High Times was in the running. Can't kind of mind where it came a close second to it. Anyway, it was a sort of in the in the running for it, and it had won another couple of awards, like a Welsh BAFTA or the sort of equivalent Scottish BAFTAs and. And, you know, critically, it done really well, but not a lot of people saw it. You know, and there wasn't the on-demand services at the time that people could just catch up with it and, and you could push it. And Twitter was not there, and I can't, don't even know if Facebook was, so there was no way you could push it through a, a social media kind of thing. And, you know, to my shame, I did a thing in The Sun. To, I think me and Stephen did an interview in The Sun um, and, and stuff, try to promote the thing, and then we, it did really well. And then we recorded a second series, and they didn't show that for another three years. So there was no like big push to um, to, to sell it or, or promote it or anything that I can remember. And then we were getting phone calls when they were about to release the second series because they had already sold it to South America. So you're getting phone calls for Venezuela and stuff like that. And, they thought we were all fucking famous, man. Oh, what's it like <laughs> to be chased about the streets and all that? And I'm like, oh, fuck, does they? What are you talking about, man? Fucking walking at the Silver Bomb Centre, picking up chewing gum in a car park. What are you talking about? 
Well, it's it, man. I mean, supposedly we we all we we all. I think it's just because we're sort of part of a, the union, and it's like you know, the Scottish person's usually like you know Trevor for Eastenders, like a wife beater, or you know, mm. or the Polish guy, or or whatever. Yeah. So I think we're kind of self conscious about it. But I mean, if you think about it, we've learned. You know, we learn the Cockney slang, the American slang. You know, we when you initially watch something, you do, you you don't know what the word is, but you figure it out. And and we've got the internet now as well. You can Google things. As well. <laughs> so put, what's that? Just put the subtitles up, it'll probably be even fucking funnier. <laughs> Try to watch some English person translating. But I do, you know what I mean? I as we, we do speak quickly, you know, and some of you know the really famous Scottish actors of of accents, or even people in the media generally, they're usually uh, sort of affectations, you know. I love Brian Cox, but you know, even they say it's a Dundonian accent that he's got, you know, so they, they know Drake like Connery, it's an invented way of speaking, you know, but they, they made something of that. I think it can be hard for Glaswegians sometimes or a lot of them getting together and, and, and doing it. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is, man. I think we still suffer for the cringe a wee bit f- from our own, you know, or people try to talk a wee bit better. It can be even worse. You know, than, than just people talking with their own scheme accent or, you know, who does he think he is? And it's a funny, it's a funny thing. But there's a lot of great writers in Scotland. You know, John Rooney's stuff was like sick. It's probably still the the most I've laughed at a drama. Do you know what I mean? Reading those scripts. And I'd, I'd worked with John in a theatre company and govern for unemployed people. And he was writing for them. But he'd, had, he'd been commissioned for a wee short film, which later turned into High Times. But I, I remember in reading that script, I remember fucking howling, man. Just fucking howling. Funny, one of the funniest things. Hadn't been acting long, really. Um, I'd, I'd done a year at college, and then I'd done that wee theatre company, and John, luckily I met him there. So I was like, oh, fuck, what? So underused, so under under undervalued. You know, I think I did a podcast talking about it specifically high times, and... And I said it was underrated. I don't think that's true. I think it was it was undervalued at the time. You know, just the, qu- the sheer quality of that and nothing else like it on the telly. You know, it was like, are, are we shameless? Are, are can I go at something like that? And it worked, you know. Got some... Uh, Alan Rorison would like to know who your favourite actor is. Um, Philip Seymour Hoffman, I think. Like, in recent times... Philip Seymour Hoffman just kind of blows me away every time I see him on a on a screen, you know. Um, so I'm lately in a Sindoka or whatever it is, another weird kind of Charlie Kaufman film, and it's just it's astonishing to watch, man. It's a, it reminds me a lot of Gordy Monroe, who I do the Dignitas stuff for. Um, he might not thank me just because I. How he looks, <laughs> vain bastard. But <laughs> but I can he reminds me a bit of that. It's got that about him. Can I take your eyes off him? You know. So Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. Colette says, "Hi boys, keep safe, love, baby doll." With all the emojis, Colette's always good for an emoji, and she's also suggesting Sons of Anarchy, bro, in the Highlander. And Sons of Anarchy. Do you know? I I started watching that once, but I need to give it another shot. I only watched. I think I only watched. I didn't give it a proper go. No, I've to, um, I don't think I've seen a single episode, man. Uh, we've got I, IKEA course. As Lemmy is an epic, legendary gamer. He is. No, he's epic at everything he does. In fact, one time he did. I think we we because we started doing this used to be an audio podcast, and then we changed it when lockdown happened. We started doing these video call type things or whatever. This is internet TV. I don't even know what it is. And Lemmy <laughs> got all his Twitch followers to. I was was chatting with Dan Connell, and I was just. I think we both just shat it a bit because we just went from about, I don't know, 100 people to like over 1,000 people. And it was just like, I was in the, I, I couldn't keep up with the comments or anything like that. So they all just turned up and probably just thought, oh, pure shite. And um, that's the only <laughs> thing that's ever happened. But uh, yeah, shouts to me for doing that, though. It did give me a wee fright, but also it was it was, it was was cool. It was amazing, man. And, um, you know, so I have very made... generous, man. Very generous. Keep saying to me about then Twitch and all that. And I'm like, I'm not really a gamer either. And, um, I can don't know how to set up the gears. It's no bother anyway. Um, but I think I did it one night. Or oh, that quiz I did, he jumped on that quiz, the stream. 
So I, I think he's a, he appreciates sort of where he's got to in, in the fans. You know, that fans first forever and all that he would do on in Twitter. And I, I, I believe that to be true. You know, well, that, it, you know it, it, a thing that he, 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 he says that he'll always stop for a photo or something like that. Mm. He's got a thing where he, where he does Aye. it. I mean, and that's I mean, not always I mean, the case. I mean, that's not always I mean, the case because he's really he's really fucking famous. You know what I mean? That's not yeah. always the case that people want to give of their time. And I'm like, well, should they? Probably not. But I think if you've been put in a position and people like what you do, it's it's not. I, I've had great jobs like high times and then nothing and then things like I mean it's up and done and you think oh fuck, you know it's nice when people like what you do. Yeah. But I mean, he's I mean, seen that. I'm just thinking of that video where he was walking through the city center and he had his hood off, and he's like, Nobody knows it's me. And then he gets busted. <laughs> and then he's, just, he's running away, What have I done with my life? He's <laughs> uh, very funny. Uh, funny guy, man. Funny guy. Uh, Susie Briggs says, uh, Too much Scottish cringe gans on. I'd like to see folk getting more comfy in their own skin with their voices. I think it's happening. I think, it's, I think people are starting to. To get away. I mean, you, you see it more with the in the hip hop scene in Scotland. Obviously, still massive Scottish cringe about that, but it's definitely changed a lot over the last ten years. Because it's weird because people quite like a Scottish accent doing poetry mm-hmm. and stand up comedy. There's loads of stand up comedy as well, but when you put that banging beat behind it, people just get weird about it. I like it, man. There was a couple of kids doing my back the other day, a couple of weeks ago during lockdown. They were filming a kind of video to some hip hop, you know. Um, boy told me the name of the band, but I can I remember? Um, but I was like, I was enjoying his flow, and I was, you know, the enunciation was good, and the way he was hitting things, and I just kind of did my nose for a distance. I was out with the dog. Um, so I, I'm a fan, you know, the places like. Um, Sunny G radio that will play a bit of it, certain shows and, and maybe Cam Glenn and stuff like that you know where it's, unless it's kind of taken off and it's got a bit of fucking muscle behind it you maybe hear something on Six Music or that, um, but that's why I like tuning into them to, to hear bits and pieces, I remember I was at, I used to go to a club in the south side called the La Roche Rumba, shout out to the Rumba peeps, hopefully we'll be back out doing another very soon but they had Guy Van Stock at it, it with a few other people, and they had the young fathers in a couple of times in a t- in the Pollock ex serviceman social club. I don't know if you you know where that is. I know where it is. I I just right. try to imagine fucking young you, fathers in there. Young fathers in there, man. Young fathers in there. It was fucking incredible, man. Just before they just before they kicked off, you know what I mean. So they weren't they, really. They were, they were around for ages, man, and they were Aye. a totally different sound. They went, they went, they really worked on it and changed their sound completely and came back. I mean, now you know they're re- remixing Massive Attack and, and, Huge, and man. that kind of stuff. The 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 Some soundtracks and all that. It's amazing. They were, yeah, well, they were on Train Spotting Two soundtrack about three That's times, right. I think, or something like that. <laughs> and uh, we've got. Wrong way down a one way street, says Mark. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. he also says, is, is Paul still in love with Santa's leg? Um, I, I mean, that's a love that never leaves you. Got, I was watching the, the, the Christmas one that you did in the Lemmy show. The bastard, there, boy. <laughs> He's a bastard, there, boy. Bastard. Every year, man, that, that makes me smile. Every year, that gets a wee out and again at Christmas. It was brilliant, man. And Brian was a very um, had a, a really particular style of directing. We knew exactly what he wanted, which kind of takes the pressure off you a wee bit, you know. And thinking, oh, I'm come up with something and be funny here. And a lot, oftentimes, his direction would be just fucking don't do anything, be deed behind the eyes. There's a lot of that deed. <laughs> Deep behind the eyes, that's too much. Don't lift a fucking eyebrow, man. Nothing. <laughs> You're like a zombie. I go, like, right, okay. Fucking after a couple of days, I go, like, right, okay, this is quite nice. Just fucking tells you exactly what he wants. But the thing is, getting that across for him, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you could give him what he wanted, and that was a nice thing. Grot um, Bags is up there, says too heavy. Alan too remembers he- the uh, Roach Rumba Nights. Rumba yes. Nights Epic, says John Ross. They certainly were, man, and hopefully there'll be more to come. 
Too Heavy says, Wow, didn't realise you wrote the songs in high times. Um, just not the opener, not the opener's a wee punk band. Um, but uh, unbeknownst to me, I had written a song, they're like, Oh, we could use that for in it. I'm not gonna fucking pay you, but uh, we could use that for in it. And I'm like, Oh, hi, hi, oh, would you do that? That's amazing. Yeah, lucky me. And then we got turned up for the screening of the first series, and David Mackay, good pal of mine, had directed three of them, but I said, A guy, I can't mind his name. Um, but he'd used my song and a bit of it for the end credits. So fucking that, add that money up if you're doing the sums out there, entertainment lawyers. Um, so that was good, I So I had done that. And then the second series, he asked me to write different songs for the end of the end of each episode. So I did that. Or I'd written a wee bit of a song. Oh, how long do you need? I'll get away with that. But they were all quite catchy. You've got okay. a guitar behind you. Could you do, a, could, you, could you be able to remember one? Oh, fuck. Um, I don't know how this will, like, sound-wise. Right, I, I, I haven't played this for a while. Can you see me? That's all right, that's good. That means I can right, use the exclusive, can I put the exclusive banner then? <laughs> Sounds I great. I passed him on the stair. We spoke of was and when. Right, no, that's not what I'm going to do. I didn't write that, I was David Bowie. You gotta be careful when you come upon smiling faces. All that's left the traces of who you were before. Gotta be careful when you come upon smiling faces Gonna take you places you've never been before And I got high as the highest mountain I came down hard as a meteorite I wash my face in a holy fountain I met a man who turned my day times into night Yeah, how's that? <laughs> That's amazing, man. A wee bit of high times thing. Seems it was on topic, no. you know. I haven't no. played it for a while, so that mate it sounded absolutely brilliant. Where's the round of applause it's... button? I've got a round, I've usually got a round of applause button. Yes. <laughs> You call that radio. Um, fucking fucking radio. Here I tell people that we hear you. One job will not allow. You call that radio. I hope okay. you see it. You call that radio. <laughs> Call that radio. <laughs> I you want to say it, that's kind of part of the fun. Powered by our patrons. Brothers and sisters. We are indeed powered by our patrons. If you want to support the show, then for a couple of pounds a month, patreon.com forward slash you call that radio. And I'll put a link in the comments as well in case you want to sign up. It helps us build the hang work. work. Doing these shows almost every night. We've done over 210 shows since lockdown began, and it wouldn't be possible to do it without the support of the patrons. Now, before I get Paul back on, I just want to tell you who's on tomorrow. Tomorrow's a doubler. Tomorrow, we're going live to Thailand at 2 o'clock in the afternoon with Dave McLean, who's the manager of Placebo, and he's the director of a new film called Schemers, which is out this week on Amazon and iTunes and all that stuff, so you can get it on DVD or digitally. He's got some brilliant stories to tell, 
So looking forward to that. That's at two o'clock tomorrow. And then at seven o'clock, we've got Alba Ened Garcia Rivas, who I've known at our first, I came aware of her stuff, celebrity death match, all that kind of things. Now she's an HBO Max director, qualified for an Oscar. She's a sculptor, animator, stop motion animating, absolute legend. She'll be here at seven o'clock live from New York. So it's tomorrow's a doubler. We're going to Thailand and we're going to New York as well. And then we've got Texture on Life and Capture Works on Thursday night. And we've got Anna Secret Poet, if I can find the thing. We've got Anna Secret Poet on the Friday night at seven o'clock. Live from Capture Works as well. And then it's a big one on Saturday. It's the fr- so that's Anna Secret Poet on Friday night. And then Friction Burn Supper, man, we've booked like way too many acts, as always. So we're keeping it like it was used to be. Too many acts. Going to try and get it done between 7 and 10. It'll probably go in a lot later than that. Absolute legendary lineup there. So uh, the likes of Hugh Reed, Len Penny, John McMuster, Becky Wallace, all sorts, all sorts there on Saturday. So... Only reason we could do it is because you support the Patreon, so thank you. Paul, people are loving yes. your tunes. People are loving it. <laughs> well, good. Uh, as I say, I haven't played it for a long time. I'm trying to get into recording here. I've got just on Garage Band, a wee interface thing I've got. So, uh, you know, I'll maybe just try and why you, rock why it you just, up. Why don't you just record the all the, the tunes and then just release them? I'm going to go back. I'm going to leave songs. it. I'm going to go back, I'm going to revisit them, mate. They're all quite catchy. I like quite hooky, catchy um, stuff. You know, kind of unashamedly poppy, almost. To be a wee kind of rocky, bluesy edge, man. It's what I try to do, anyway. Um, I do, sometimes when I'm writing a song, I'll go, oh, I quite like that band. I'll try and write a wee song like theirs. Not, like, rip a song off, but go on that style. So, it's all yeah, I've been doing, I'm- really. Trick is never to rip off the same band twice. <laughs> yeah. Aye. I mean, let's move a bit. There's plenty to choose from. So Martin, uh, Martin White's loving it. Uh, John McAlinden, that's Colonel Mustard himself, is tuned in. He's uh, saying sounding brilliant, man. Thank you, man. That's um that means a lot coming for your good self. Hope to get out and see he's back on a stage rocking it soon. As soon as possible. Hope you're Ever well. Last, uh, Buddha KM says it. It reminds him of Everlast. All Susie right, Briggs. Everlast. Susie Briggs says, fantastic. Gallus says, Martin. Uh, we go, clap, 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 says Sarah Gladman. <laughs> wash hands, wash hands, says Mickey Mouse. So I'm taking it, clap, hand, uh, wash hands is like, because I'm seeing this all the time, man. Am I being an idiot? Does that mean people are clapping? I don't know. Wash is this, hands. Is this an, an, an internet pattern, man. People do it all the time in this show, and it's going to look, sound, I'm going to sound stupid. For like, I actually don't know why he's all do it. I'm assuming it's like, wait, like, something the day we like, everyone's got to move their hands because of everything, and possibly. also over their clapping as well. But, um, you know, I always feel like a wee bit of a fly when I'd get the hand sanitizer on in a shop or whatever. Do you know what I mean? You, you just, but it's good, do it, uh, do wash your hands, do not touch your face. So good, <laughs> good news, uh, quality sugar cube, love baby doll, uh, Vince, Vince is in the house. He says, uh, hello. Rumba Thank once you. more, once the plague is an ab- absence, abeyance, abeyance. Abeyance. He's a very abeyance. intelligent man, Vince. You know, more intelligent you than seven I. Seven words when you can use one big one. No, absolutely. No. I'm all for it. But no, Vince um, uh, was the facilitator for many a fantastic night um, over on the south side. So uh, he kens his onions and that. Um, and he knows how to put on a good gig. So hopefully, because there's got to be some party once we can all get out, once we've all been vaccined to, up to the eyeballs, if that happens. Yeah, it wouldn't be the COVID we'll be worrying about, it'll be the hangovers we'll be worrying about then. <laughs> what a great voice and talent. Thank you, Paul, says Sharon. Thanks, and Sharon. Thank Alan you. Mrs. Drimba Nights and a brilliant Paul, says Alan. Is the new laptop working its magic? Um, it kind of is because I spent a lot of money on it. So um, generally I'm like, I'll get a f- computer, a laptop, and I'll, like, I'll learn this on it. And I just play fucking games on it. I look at Facebook, which I don't do anymore. So I'm like, right, I've spent about a dollar on this thing. It's a good machine for making music. 
Um, I don't want it to be too complicated. I'm not like want to be fucking the new Phil Spector. Fucking glad that can't sorry. Um, excuse my French, that's a horrible one. But um, I just want to be able to lay down simple things. I write stuff, I come up with stuff all the time, we riffs and we licks, and I never record it. I record it on my phone, it sounds shite. So I think this has got focus in my mind a wee bit. So, yes, to answer your question, it is the trick so far. We're getting to the bottom of the wash hands emoji thing, right? So what's happening now is, is that people are saying, sorry, wrong emoji. And I thought that the wash hands emoji was a clap emoji. So, right, so it's because YouTube's shown it to me as in text format. Ah. Right, so people have actually been clapping all along and they've just been, you know, it looks they're similar. Sometimes it can look like well, a praying you would, as well. Clapping is probably quite dangerous at the moment because you'll be firing off bits of dead skin yeah. and fucking sweat everywhere. So, so make that, sure you get probably, your hand sanitised before the song finishes. That's that a, a safer feature? way. We'll just get the, the song's coming to the end. Get the hand sanitizer out. Okay. Yes. Wash hands, wash hands, wash hands, wash hands. Well done. Emotion. Well done now. Very good. Very good. Angela, another legend. She's saying, get your recording done. I'm going to, Angela. I'm going to, I'm going to record go. that. We tune for high times. It's my song. Maybe they paid me for it. Wasn't <laughs> in a contract. So I'm going to record that as a thing. I've had people ask me, you should do that. And people remember it and stuff. Um, this other podcast we did that was just purely about high times. The boys are mad for it, so and offered a lot of help, like production and studio space and all that. So it'd be silly no uh, day, it, you know. We've got CCTV in the house. How are you doing? They've got a great new tune out uh, that's on Steg G's new album. We talked about Sunny Govan earlier on, guys. If he's a, if he's got a, f a few quid you can spare, then get involved in the Sunny Govan crowdfunder. We'll try to save Sunny Govan. And like you said, man, it's like it's it's just an amazing station. It plays anything. You don't know what is going to happen when Sonny Govan's on, and that's what makes them magical. So we want to save Sonny Govan, and we want to save Carlton Studios. It feels like we're trying to save something every month, but that's what we need to do so that we've got a fucking decent planet out there. Planet Glasgow will be okay if we can. It's save genuine it. local radio, you know. I think that's what it is, and you know, I love doing things like this. But you know, Sonny Govan and Cam Glenn and all that, we all have to be bits of politics going on, but they're genuine local stations and I, I hear a lot of Scottish hip hop on it, a lot of Scottish rappers that I would never hear and I, I don't know, there's a, there's a mad show on it that I love on Sunny Govan. I hear it when I'm working sometimes that he plays some really beautiful kind of obscure, trippy tunes, man. I can't, I can't mind what the show is called, but um, aye, it's worth saving in Source Cal Studios. Source Cal Studios. I've rehearsed there a lot, man, so yeah, good people. Save save them both, and we've got uh, late to the party. We're going to catch up later. Nice one, Ali. Well, it's a great show. You can watch it back. It'll be on YouTube. Martin says, "Don't talk about Celtic, please." <laughs> why would I? Why would I even? Why would I even go there? That's just. I, I mean, I've, I'm talked to after the last nine years. I'm going to take a back seat and let somebody <laughs> else talk about their team for a change. <laughs> God, I was saying absolutely brilliant, Paul. Cheers for the chat and the tunes. Yeah, man, it's been absolutely brilliant. Please do get the tunes recorded and uh, feel free to come back on. We do like uh, like the pub quiz nights are over here in the West End night where we have a few different guests on playing some tunes, man. So if you're ever up for just giving us a couple of tunes and I'm not putting you in the spot, give you a bit no, of time as well, man. I would, I, would like, I would like to do that, man. You know, I've got some covers and that, but it'd be nice to do some original stuff. Do give original it a bash. Stuff, man. Do give it a bash. Stuff. Aye, fuck Absolutely, it, man. man. Let's end on a positive note, man. Let's say if if it was um, restrictions were gone tomorrow, hmm. oh, I nearly touched that green screen. We're so close to this green screen <laughs> off the screen um, what, what, ven what venue would you want to be in? And could you name a couple of bands that you'd book? If you could be as unrealistic as you want, who would you like to see? What ven what pub or venue would you like to be in? And what what bands would you like to see? <sighs> Do you know? What? I think the Barrowlands, somewhere like the Barrowlands now, and probably, a, a, so a good wee rubber night. I'm going to say that because my pals are own, but um, they're genuinely some of the best times I've had in my life there. And I've met, you know, lifelong friends there. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not all the time, but I'm, I'm starting to miss 
contact with the people. So well, the, wee, the, wee, the wee gigs are the best for me as well, man. I mean, I, the, the the more you get in at them, it's like the idea of going to a stadium gig just sounds has been sounding shite for years anyway. But I think there's not the the big gigs are not going to happen for a long time. But hopefully no. there is a bit of hope for the wee gigs. In some level, we won't be waiting too long for something decent, or maybe some outdoor stuff. You know what I mean? Over the summer, maybe not a proper full on festival, but hopefully. For well, the last couple of years, we've to see chic. I've, I've enjoyed the sort of West End Amazing. festival stuff outdoor. And the day we went, it was pushing the rain. It was like a fucking rave in a landfill site. Everybody had their things on the rain mac things, and it was just bouncing. Um, Vince was there that day with his good lady, some other friends of mine. So in recent times, that's probably one of the best gigs I've been to. I went to see David Byrne a couple of years ago, so wouldn't be too bad seeing him again but um you know as a band i go to see most years when they come here and it's the dub pistols so we mix a drum and oh, bass and dub reggae and and kind of um bit of rap and uh, rodney p and stuff and i, I kind of uh, saw them in stereo the last time they were here as well so i've saw them in some great wee venues in glasgow and i'm like oh that's quite a good one like back in the day when people would go to see squeeze squeeze would come once a year and Gary Glitter, I was not one of the people who went to see him every year. Let me just put that out there. So the Dub Pistols, um, yeah, I would, I, I would I be, them, I would be one of them. The main stage at uh, Beat, Beat Herder, they were absolutely amazing at that, man. But they, I think the last time they played Glasgow, it's kind of more kind of smaller, like stereo kind of sort of yeah. vibe. Aye, dub, dub Pistols, uh, uh, um, stereo, or no, Rumba, Rumba. Dub Pistols, Rumba would be that, fucking be hot, man. Sleaford Mods at Stereo. Says man. Oh, Sleaford Mods are, aye, they're, are they not coming in August? Bar is November, or? November, yeah, man. November, I yeah. I may be going to that. I've been told that I might have a ticket for that. So, uh, and I also, what's a weird one is, is that Jesus and Mary Chain are playing the Bar is run about the same time, I think. I can't remember exactly when because it keeps on getting postponed. But they're doing a warm up gig at Stereo. So seeing Jesus and Mary Jane at stereo, that'll be impossible to get a ticket to, but get a go. Sleaford Mods, I'm loving that album. Do you know what made me miss gigs the other night, man? Um, Big Lewis McLeod does our impersonations. His brother owns a garage, and um, he's a good friend of the boy I'm in a band with, and he posted a wee thing, and it was Prince from 95, I think, after he played... an our exhibition centre or something, did they put it was an outdoor venue? And then he went back to the... We went back to the garage after fucking playing a gig, two, two and a half hours, three hour gig, and then went back and did another fucking set in the garage. And somebody posted like the opening tune for that, and it just man made me sad. You know, people go oh, a bit like Bobby, oh, but for the lost Bobby and the lost Prince, everything's been a bit shit, and it just kind of has. <laughs> so I mean, it just kind of has. It's kind of undeniable. And then you watch. A wee thing like that, and you go, fuck me, man. Music, there's just nothing like it to, to get to your soul. And I enjoy your music, mate. So um, thanks very much. It was a great night at your gig, and hopefully we'll see you in a bit there again soon. Absolutely, man. Well, thank you very much. Really appreciate taking the time to speak to us tonight, man. Get Paul on Twitter. I've put the link up in the comments to keep up to date with what's happening next, man. Hopefully we'll see you in the real world soon, mate. And Fingers crossed, brother. Thanks for having us on, man. Anytime, mate. Thank you very much. Hopefully, get on for a wee tune in the future. Uh, Aria says, oh, where was that? Cheers. For, that was class chat. Um, we saw the dubs, pistols, and stereo mine top gig. Yes. And Mark says, I'll be at the bar is November. This is Sleaford Mods. Can't wait. Mark's going to be there. Yeah, man. We've got a lot to look forward to. It's just need to get through this shite just now. We'll be back tomorrow. Remember, at two o'clock, where we're going to be speaking to Dave McLean who is the placebo manager, and he's got a new film out called Schemers, which is out now, and I'm going to go and watch that just now so that I actually know what I'm talking about tomorrow. So go and watch it now if you want to. You may get more out of the interview tomorrow. That's at 2 o'clock because we're live in Thailand. And then we're going to go to New York at 7 for uh, the amazing Alba Enid Gathia Rivas. So that's at 7, and that's at 2, uh, Dave. At two. So it's a doubler tomorrow. Thank you very much, Paul. All the best, mate. And we'll Thank see you, you man. tomorrow night, early start at two o'clock. Next Brothers one. And sisters. Brothers and sisters. Is that you, Daniel? Are you before me? Cool that radio. Yeah.
you call that radio? <laughs> Hello? 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 Yes, this is Dawn. Oh, my God, baby.